Hey everyone, in this video I'm gonna go through my Blender startup file. So this is basically a startup file before I jump into any large animation projects. And I'm also gonna leave a free download link in the description. So you can download it and use it for your own animations or use it as a reference to create your own startup file. Also, before we begin, if you want to direct message me and see more content from me, then you can follow my personal Instagram page. You can join my Discord server where we have a nice growing community and we help each other out and share our work and progress. If you want to support the channel and also download and use some of my Blender files like the walk cycles, run cycles, water shader, enderman particle effects and much more, then you can join my Patreon for $1 a month and download whatever you see there and use them in your own animations and in the process support the channel. All the links will be in the description. Now let's continue with the video. And by the way, I got this idea from Mont's video. When I saw his video, I was inspired to create my own Blender startup file and I want to share it with you guys. And also, if you want to check out Mont's video, the video link will be in the description. So in this video, I'm mainly going to go through the collections and the outliner and show you what different things do and how I have things organized. So I'm going to hide all of the collections which are visible over here so that it's not distracting. And first of all, I have the map plants and background collection. So all of these belong to the map when you import the world using MC Prep or JMC. So I have the map over here and just to show you an example, there is nothing in the startup file, but if I open one of my animation projects, which I'm working on right now, for example, this is the Steve Adventures uh, part one, and I imported the map over here and then I imported the plants. So the plants uh, or the vegetation, if you want to call it, uh, are basically the trees, uh, the leaves, and all of that stuff. So the flowers, the leaves, and the grass, everything goes inside the plants collection. I know it doesn't make much sense to call them plants because not everything is a plant here. You can call it like vegetation or whatever you want, but this looks pretty short and I know what this is, so I like to name it plants. Now, if I hide this, it's gonna hide everything that I just mentioned and it's only gonna be like the plain environment. And if I unhide this, uh, it's gonna be unhidden. And if, when you import the world in the beginning, you, for example, I used MC Prep to import the OBJ world. It's going to import the world separately. So it's going to be named something like Mineways World and then whatever you named your world. So you can just take this and then drag and drop this inside your map. And just, just to show you an example, I did that. And if I expand the map, I have this world over here. Mineways World Part 1. So you can drag and drop this and make this organized. And also you can select all the leaves, grass, plants and whatever you want. Click on M and then move them inside your plants collection so that you're organized because plants uh, you don't really need to see the vegetation while you're animating for example i don't need to see this grass or the leaves because they're gonna lag the scene so i can just hide them with one easy click and i can continue animating that way and it's gonna be pretty easy and this is uh just to keep your things organized now the next collection i have as you can see the background collection over here but i deleted this here because i don't really need to use the background because i already imported the large words but the backgrounds are basically stuff that you use to cover the background. Maybe you can add like a sky or like a 2D planes and trees and all of that stuff to cover the background. So if you want to, you can keep it. Or if you don't want to, you can just delete it and move on. Now I have the characters collection over here. And if I expand the characters, I only have Steve over here. But you can just uh, select this collection and then go to file append. And whatever character you append is going to be added in this collection because you selected it before. So I have the Steve rig over here. This is the BPS rig version 4. It's a pretty cool, easy to use rig and I will leave a link for it in the description. And it belongs to the Squared Media, so I will leave their YouTube channel and their Discord server in the description as well. So this is nothing special over here. I didn't add any lighting or any skin modifications. This is just a plain Steve skin. So you can feel free to customize this however you want and then add more characters over here. Now after the Steve, I have the LCA collection, which stands for the lights camera action and this is the term i learned from derek elliott and it's pretty good to organize your scenes so in the lights camera action i have as you can see the clouds the sun over here and i have some of the lights over here and i'm gonna show you what these do basically so first of all i used mc prep mc prep add-on to create the mc sky and i only chose dynamic sky because i don't want to see the sun and moon so i just created the dynamic sky and then set the time of day to 10. And if I set the time of day to 10, it's going to be the daylight. So you can see it has a nice bright daylight. And also when you create the world, it's going to create this empty sphere. And there's going to be a sun added in between that sphere. But I deleted the sun and then created my own sun so I can have more control over it. 
And by the way, you can change the time of day and make like pretty cool time lapse animations or make a nighttime scene or pretty good evening and golden hour scene. So that's pretty easy to do. And if you want to create a more like advanced, better looking sky, you can use the MC Blend add-on, which is created by Aspirata. So you can just create the environment over here. And then it's going to create like pretty nice looking stars. It's going to create its own clouds as well. But for my animation, I want to keep things simple. I don't want to have like too much customizations. But the MC Blend add-on allows you to control a lot of things. It's going to allow you to control the color of the sky and other things as well. If you want to learn more about the MC Blend, the video link and the tutorial will be in the description. Now I'm going to control Z this. I'm going to continue what I was showing you. So first of all, as you can see, when I expand the LCA collection, I have the cameras collection over here. So if I hide this, my camera is going to be hidden. And again, just to show you an example of what I do in my actual production, I have two cameras over here. So this is one and then camera two. And I use two cameras to animate because I don't want to keyframe the motion blur later on. And I want to keep things simple after that. And using two cameras is a pretty good option for that. And I use the camera markers to mark them on the proper keyframes. So if I hide the LCA in the cameras collection, you can see both cameras are going to be hidden. And this is in case you, you're lost, for example, you have one camera here and then the other one is somewhere over here. You can just select this and then press on numpad period and then just zoom in on your camera. Now, I'm going to go back to my Blender startup file. And yeah, first thing you notice is the world is like nicely lit because I set the global illumination to one. By default, it's less than that. And the if I play my animation, you can see the clouds are moving. So I just animated the clouds. I added like a simple movement from like frame zero to frame 1400. I just move the clouds on the right side and then move them diagonally as well. And they're just going to be moving diagonally throughout the whole animation because after I animated them, I just selected both keyframes, clicked on Shift E and added the linear extrapolation. So they're going to be moving around forever. And it's a pretty nice detail which you can add in your own animations. And by the way, you don't have to use that if you have like a, if you prefer to use HDR skies, you can just go to the startup file click on X to delete this entire world and then just import your HDRI. But I'm just experimenting and for my new animations, I want to use the MC Prep Sky and I want to use the default Minecraft clouds because in my past animations, I've always used HDRI skies and I want to try something different right now. And now I have the Gobos over here and I'm going to show you what Gobos do. But before I do, I just want to go through this quickly. So I have the sun over here and I have the clouds over here. And if you want to hide them, you can hide them this way. But if you want to quickly customize the sun, change the color or customize the clouds and do whatever you want, you can just open this collection, open the sun sky collection and just select them and just do whatever you want. And by default, the sun, I set this to like the strength of five and you can change this as well. And by the way, I'll set this to something like light orange as well, but you can customize this further if you want to. And then I have the loops collection. I have nothing over here, but if you want to import like fight loops or walk cycles or like your looped animations, for background or foreground you can just go through this collection click here and then go to file pen and import whatever you want here and then unhide this and now i have the before i go through the uh, objects and other stuff i'm going to show you what gobos do so gobos are these lights which i already have a tutorial about that so just to show you what these do i'm gonna quickly move my cursor over here and then create a plane scale this up and then move this over here and now to see the effect better, I'm just going to go through my sun sky collection and then I'm just going to turn down the sun strength to zero. And I'm also going to turn that on. Maybe I don't need to turn on. So this is what these do. Basically, the gobos are these uh, textured lights, which give your scene a more natural feeling. I'm going to show you some examples on the screen, which I use like for my product animations. And this is going to make your scene look pretty nice, but you don't have to use them all the time. You can just choose some of the scenes you want them to be used and then use them this way. So this is the area light and I have the area light spread set to one. And then I added this uh, texture over here. If I go to shader editor, this is pretty simple. I added the noise texture and the color ramp and then adjusted some of the settings. And this is the same for the spotlight. And then in the spotlight, I added the same texture, but I just added both of those so that we have the variation. You can either choose the area light or choose the spotlight as well. And then you can customize this further if you want. If you don't want to use them again, you can just hide the Gobos collection and they're going to be hidden. Now I'm going to delete this plate and I'm also going to set the sound straight back to five. So let's continue with our tutorial. And what I'm going to do now is show you what the objects collection do. So I'm going to go back to the 3D viewport over here. And now if I expand the objects, I have the favorite objects collection. So what I basically did, if I unhide this collection, 
I have all of these objects labeled over here. So these are like objects which I downloaded and used from the BSS Asset Pack, Bookscape Studios Asset Pack. I've mentioned them many, many times in my tutorial series. They're free to use, free to download. Again, I will leave a link in the description. They have the Minecraft Blocks rig and they have the new 3D Blocks and Items rig. I believe it's called something like that. So what I did, I just imported those objects, organized whichever objects I liked and then labeled them. So you can also use them in your own animations if you want. So right here, I have the terrain collection with the animated fire, lava, water, and the campfires, which is very, very nice. I didn't have to set them up manually. And also the campfires have this empty, which is pretty nice and convenient. I could just move them around wherever I want. And then I have the objects over here, which you can use for like interior scenes or some of them for exterior scenes. If you want to like uh, create your own custom campfire, you can do it this way. We have the shelves over here, the chests, some pretty nice custom chairs. And what I love is the 3D extruded objects like the 3D crafting table, the bookshelf, the also default Minecraft bookshelf, which is like extruded and 3D, the extruded bed as well, which looks very, very good. And also we have the other cool objects over here, like this barrel, the chairs, tables, the 3D furnace, and also this book as well, which you can, which is actually rigged and you can customize this and open whichever pages you want and then animate it. Also, I have this pretty nice looking chair, uh, which is again from the BSS asset pack. So as you can see, it says close chair in the shape key. So if I select the chair and then go inside the shape keys, which is here in the data properties, there's this value, which you can slide around. So if I slide this down, it's going to close the chair. If I slide it up, it's going to open the chair, which is pretty, pretty nice. And I have a bunch of other objects over here. I don't know what this one is called, but I just like the design of it called Lecter. Yeah, I hope I spelled this correctly and just use whichever objects you want in your animations. Then I have the tools, which I like to use in my own animations. We have like the maps, the potions, the bucket, uh, the ball and cheese, the ender pearl and the item frame. And also we have the text over here. And the text is pretty cool. So you can just click on the text, click on tab, and then you just type whatever you want. For example, just type subscribe, you know, because if you're new here, you can subscribe to the channel. Why not? And then if I continue, I have the weapons label over here. So so the weapons are very, very cool. So these are like two very cool custom looking weapons. If I go to material, then I have the textures applied. We have this nice looking shield. We have the animated uh, armor stand. It's like rigged. You can animate this if you want. We have the 3D arrow and a uh, rigged bow as well. And we have the spear. And this spear is not in the BSS assets pack. This spear was made by me in the past. Uh, and I just want to include it here so you can download it and use it in your own animations as well. So yeah, these are the favorite objects. And if you don't want to use some of them, what you can do is, for example, select these and then just click on M and then move them in the trash collection. And the trash collection is the last one over here and it's going to be hidden. So if I enable this, it's going to be uh, enabled back. But if I hide this, it's going to be, it's going to hide everything else. So you can move everything you don't need in the trash collection. And then later, before you render animation, you can just right click and then click on delete hierarchy and just going to delete everything else that is uh, that is in the collection and it's going to delete the collection itself as well. But that's optional to do. So I'm just going to control Z. So yeah, just so, so you know, you have this option over here. And then I have the VFX collection and you can just add your VFX, your particles, or fog effects and whatever you want. So right now I have nothing, but just to keep things organized, I created this collection over here and then added the color over here. But if you want to add the colors, you don't know how to do that. It's pretty easy. Just uh, right click on the collection and just choose any color you want. And adding the colors uh, is going to help you be even more organized. So now I'm going to hide the favorite objects collection. And if you want to use some of the objects, you can, for example, select them and then move them in your own collection, create a new one or move them in the map as well, just to keep things organized. And now that we've covered almost everything else regarding the collections and assets, now I'm quickly going to show you the render settings and all of the other stuff which you're going to be using as well. So first of all, I have it set to cycles with GPU set. Uh, viewport has 20 samples with noise threshold enabled. And render also has the noise threshold enabled with 100 samples and the denoising enabled as well. Uh, you can change this around. I set the noise threshold to 0.1, which is going to make your scene render a lot faster. The default is 0.01, which might be a little slower. Also, if I go to the compositing, I have the compositing notes set here. I have the tutorial about compositing. If you want to see which nodes do what, you can check out the tutorial as well. Again, link will be in the description. But I have the map value. And if I go to the render layers, I have the mist pass enabled. So you can create a mist with these nodes as well. I have the glare node, which is going to glow your scene. Then lens distortion is going to create the chromatic operation. And then I have all the other nodes like color balance, color correction over here, 
and I have this ellipse mask with blur which is gonna create this vignette effect and you can mess around with the values and then you can just uh, do whatever you want with it. So the startup file will come with the collections, with the already optimized render settings and with the compositing nodes as well and you can customize this or you can just use it as reference and just do whatever you want with it. And now finally, before you start animating, make sure to go to File, Save As, and then save as your animation and for example name your animation whatever you want because you don't want to overwrite this startup file but if you want to open up blender and then see this every time you open blender i don't really want that but if you want that you can just go to file click on default and then save startup file and then once you confirm this it's going to make your blender uh, a default startup file so every time you open blender this is what you're going to see but i don't really want that because i'm also working on stuff which is not minecraft related so I have this MC start file saved in one of my folders and before I start animating I just click on file, save as and then create a new blender file and then just do whatever I want with it and this is not going to be overwritten and it's going to be saved as a separate file. So you can just choose whichever you want. So yeah, that's pretty much it, uh, this is what I wanted to show you. Also I'm going to be doing a Q&A video soon so in case you missed my post I'm going to leave a link in the description for the community post so you can just go ahead and ask me any questions and more casual and fun questions will be appreciated. Since we hit 3,000 subscribers, I want to do a Q&A video. So thank you for that, everyone. And the Q&A video is going to come out pretty soon. Also, if you're new here, be sure to subscribe to the channel to see more videos like this. If you want to watch some of my own animations, then you can check out the video on the left side. Or if you want to see how to animate cameras like a pro and see some of the tips and tricks on how to make cool camera movements, then you can check out the video on the right side. So choose whichever video you want, and I will see you there. Thank you for watching.